In November 2015, Wired UK posted a video of a talk given by Positron Dynamics CEO Ryan Weed. He spoke about positrons and how the insane energy potential of antimatter will end up changing the way we build rockets forever and that they are building that rocket. They would be demonstrating their technology in orbit using a CubeSat, a small 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter satellite that's great for showcasing new technology by 2016. In his presentation, Weed mentioned SpaceX as a potential client to use their revolutionary new propulsion technology in the Starlink satellite constellation that was launched just a few months ago. However, we know from the Starlink media brief that the CubeSats are using regular old hole effect ion thrusters more than three years after their initial 2016 goal. This technology promised to change the world of space exploration as we know it. And with apparent solutions to some of antimatter's most challenging problems, it looked like the technology wasn't far off. However, it now seems that from those first presentations, there haven't been any major updates and right now, we don't even know if the company is still operating. Hey guys, welcome to another video and thank you for watching White Fox. Just quickly before we get started, this channel releases two videos a week, every week, where I cover topics from space innovation and game design to tech, futurism and everything in between. So please get subscribed and like the video because it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. I'm really grateful for everyone who has already subscribed. I know it's hard to sub to a small channel because you don't really know what you're getting into, but rest assured, YouTube is my primary interest, so the content will keep coming as long as you guys, all four of you, keep watching. Let's dive in. So first, what the heck is antimatter and what can we use it for? Now, we ain't scientists. But I'll give you the easy version, as if I could give you the difficult version. I'm not a physicist. But we can at least get a rudimentary understanding of antimatter. The concept is fairly simple. Look at this equation. I'll give you a couple of seconds to solve for x. Time's up. Now if you answered 2, you gave the positive answer. If you answered minus 2, you gave the negative answer. But both are correct. In 1928, a British physicist named Paul Dirac wrote an equation that, just like our introductory little brain buster, also had two possible answers, a negative one and a positive one. But instead of brushing off his negative answer, Dirac embraced the duality of his solution and in so doing discovered antimatter. Well, of course he did. Look at this guy. Just look at that hair. Dirac combined quantum theory with special relativity and through his equation arrived at the stunning conclusion that for each particle there exists a corresponding antiparticle, identical in every way, distinguished only by charge. While a regular electron will have a negative charge, its corresponding anti-electron will have a positive charge. That's why we call it a positron. Of course, Dirac only theorized the existence of antimatter at this point, but soon after, in 1932, a professor at Caltech called Carl Anderson observed the first anti-electron or positron. Anderson was studying cosmic ray particles in what is referred to as a cloud chamber. Long story short, the line you're seeing in this image should be curving to the right, not to the left. This discovery was also later confirmed by Occhialini and Blackett, sorry if I butchered those, in 1934. Now, if you are watching this, the chances are you would have heard of antimatter, but relegated it to the realm of science fiction more than science... science. And while an in-depth analysis of the uses of antimatter in modern science exceeds the scope of this video, suffice it to say it's definitely not a creation of fiction and is very much proven and useful. Currently, it sees application in the medical field in PET scans. But what we're interested in is antimatter's potential as the basis or fuel of a propulsion system to take us to space. Now, if you don't know the first thing about rocket science, that's okay, because really all you need to know is this. If you're planning on sending something to space or sending something great distances within space, you're gonna need a heck load of energy. How we currently get that energy is to create fuel that we then contain in our rockets, and finally, we propel it out the back, causing an equal reaction in the opposite direction, which luckily in our case, is up. But here's the problem. Rocket fuel isn't really energy dense enough right now. If you've ever picked up two objects that are the same size, so let's picture a ball. One is metal, the other is plastic. Which one is heavier? Obviously, the metal ball is heavier. Why? Because it's made of a denser material than the plastic ball. It takes up the same amount of space, but it's denser, so it's heavier. The same thing more or less applies to our current rocket fuel technology. Except instead of just regular volumetric mass density, we're talking energy density. Having enough rocket fuel to take you anywhere means you need a heck load of fuel. If you don't have enough, it'll quickly burn up and you'll just do a very explosive little hop. 
But if you add more fuel, where are you gonna keep it? That's right, the fuel tank. But for more fuel, you're gonna need a bigger tank. And a bigger tank means more weight. And more weight means more energy required to lift. And more energy required to lift means more fuel. And more fuel required means a bigger fuel tank. And a bigger fuel tank means more weight. And more weight means more energy required to lift. You get it. Gravity sucks. So what we really need to go to space more often, to build moon bases, to colonize Mars and Titan, to dive underneath the ice on Europa, to venture outside the solar system, discovering new stars and perhaps even life beyond Earth, is to contain more energy in a smaller space. This is where antimatter comes in. It's the most energy dense material in the universe. It's subatomic in nature, which means it's smaller than an atom. And it just so happens that when you bring antimatter really close to regular matter, it annihilates. Yes, that's the technical term. And when that happens, it releases energy. A buttload of energy. And in fact, according to Ryan Weed, 20 grains of anti-salt has the same amount of energy as the 4 million pounds of rocket fuel that took the space shuttle to orbit. Well, White Fox, that sounds amazing. Why haven't we powered our cities with it yet? Why is Elon Musk even concerned with electric cars, I hear you asking? Well, you know, there are some problems, I guess. Remember how we said that rocket fuel is created and stored and propelled? Well, it turns out that since antimatter pretty much explodes the second it comes into contact with regular matter, it's very hard to contain. It's also very hard to create it, and since annihilation releases gamma rays, which are all but impossible to direct, we can't really propel it either. That's all of the things. The biggest problem of all though, is that when you do create antimatter, they're created super hot and you need to be able to cool them down to actually use them. With current tech, cooling is only 0.7% efficient. In other words, not efficient at all. Well, that's where positron dynamics hopefully comes in. Started in 2011 by Ryan Weed and funded by the Teal Foundation, Positron Dynamics seeks to increase the speed of modern rocket technology by a thousand. That means around the world in three seconds, to Mars in a few weeks, and Alpha Centauri, our closest star system, in roughly 40 years. How? By utilizing annihilation catalyzed fusion propulsion. So as I said before, annihilation releases gamma rays, we can't direct them. But what Positron Dynamic is doing is using the energy from that annihilation and converting the energy into a fusion reaction, which can be directed. They also seem to have figured out how to create enough positrons for propulsion through a radioisotope, and they annihilate these positrons as soon as they're generated, eliminating the need for storing them. They cool them down using a patented moderator that we mentioned before. However, we haven't really heard anything new from the company in a few months. The last time Brian Weed presented on anything to my knowledge was at the Space Access 2019 conference in April, where he pretty much just said the same stuff he's been saying the last almost four years and confirmed that the NASA NIAC Phase 1 had been concluded. In short, NASA has a program called the NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts Program or NIAC that works in phases. If your Phase 1 tech has been successfully tested, you can move on to Phase 2 for additional funding and so on until Phase 3. Positron Dynamics were given Phase 1 funding, but didn't make it to Phase 2. Now, since I don't work for NASA or have ever been the recipient of a NIAC grant, I can't tell you that not making it to Phase 2 is a bad thing, because I don't know. But from the NIAC website, I can tell you that Phase 1 studies are 9-month, quote-unquote, efforts to explore the overall viability of a project. We'd also confirmed at Space Access in April 2019 that Phase 1 had been concluded and that they're now looking into some small business innovation research grants. Now, I reached out to Ryan to see if I can't find out anything, and honestly, I was just hoping for a, yep, still working on it, or something to that end. But unfortunately, I didn't get a response. I can confirm that the CEO read my messages, though. Now, the fact that he didn't respond doesn't really mean anything bad necessarily, so don't think on it too much. Chances are he just thought I was a pesky reporter looking to do a hit piece on him or something like that. Whatever is going on, I really hope they'll give us an update soon. If you're watching this, spread the word because their tech does have a few technical hurdles to overcome, but who knows, given enough funding, it could seriously change space exploration as we know it. Just imagine we increase the speed of our rockets by a thousand. Now, I want to know what you guys think. Does this all sound too good to be true? Do you think the company's gone under? Do you think they're just quietly working on it? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and a comment. Do the like thing now though. If you liked it yet, please like it. Please like the video. I need your acceptance, please. Every single time I release a new video, I do my best to improve and I'm learning new things every single day. So please get subscribed, okay? I know, no, wait. I know what you're doing. You're looking at my subscribe. Oh, it's 35. Great. Wow. This guy's 35 subscribers. He's asking for subscribers. I'm doing this full time, man. Please throw me a bone.